Welcome to the Whiskey Vaults. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. He is a level three whiskey sommelier. I am a sampler of the whiskeys <laughs> for, for, the, for the freeze. And this is the Weird Morning Light. It is Weird Morning Light. Okay. It sounds like a uh, song lyric or something. Weird Morning Light. It, it comes out at the same time as but Brandy <laughs> and, you know. Right. Okay, so this is Aaron. Isle of Aaron. Oh. Okay. The Bobby. I was about to start talking about a different thing in, about Aaron, but that's yeah. yeah. This is the, uh, Aaron is a one I really I always really like, but this one is their quarter cat. So it starts in bourbon barrels, yeah, and then I'm listening. They move it into quarter casks, which are like 12, 13 gallon. You have toothpaste, don't you? Yeah, like 12, 13 gallon uh, barrels, roughly, mm -hmm. right? So smaller barrels in Scotland. And they let them sit in there for a year and a half ish. Mm -hmm. Then they release it. So it's the Bothy quarter cask, okay. bottled at cask strength. Oh, now right. this one starting the morning off with I know, right? Gusto. This is uh, batch one, mm -hmm. the first release of the Bothy. I, you know, I enjoy how we're going to record. You know, a handful of episodes. Yeah, and we're starting with cask strength. Multiple whiskeys, most likely, yeah. in each episode, and then we're going to go to a meeting. Yeah. Get important things done. <laughs> and make decisions. <laughs> Remember, so, they are mostly doing an unpeated malt. Yeah, so I'm getting, um, no, it's, there's there's no smoke, there's no peat that I'm getting on the nose. Uh, I'm getting like a, a fruity, malty type of balance. Malty yeah, with a with the hint of that sweet rubber. Sweet rubber. Sweet rubbery, like, remember the toys you got in McDonald's? You'd squeeze them in the air hole in the bottom oh. and pump out that really sweet plasticky note. Okay, all right. It's something I get very commonly in scotches. I've said this before, but it's just such a dominant smell of my childhood. It's a uh, squeaky toy air. Yeah, it's a huge smell of my childhood and squeaky. Happy Meals and squeaky toy air toys in the food packets. Because yeah. the first thing you do is you squeak it, and then you hold your finger there while you're squeaking it. To see, you know, if it then you use it in the bathtubs and start utilizing bubbles. it can hold water. And then eventually you just start going. Your, your, uh, yeah, you start smelling it. Oh, see, I like this one because it has all of the Ooh. dense sweetness of Aaron that I like, and all of the multi must. But then it's got this big barrel spice impact at the end. Well, the the fruitiness for me on the nose, mm -hmm. that transitioned over to a floral, like a yeah. rich floral element. Usually if it's fruity on the nose, I'm going to get fruity on the taste. Floral on the nose, floral on the taste. You know, but now it's like, ah, oh, that's that, that, had, that went through a transition. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this one. So a little bit of water added to this sort of sweetened it and brought down the alcohol spice. Mm. And like um, on the back end of the floral, there's like that caramelized sugar creme brulee type of vibe. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Ooh. Now, here's what I want to see is yeah. how does this compare? Because there's a chance, even though Aaron is getting much better distribution these days, right. there's a chance that if you can get Aaron, you may not be able to get the Bothy. So let's compare it to the normal. So this is the Aaron 10, which if you have a shot at any Aaron, it's yeah. going to be this one. Okay. I, w I would say, I think Aaron has, for the 10, good availability. Certainly less fruity on the nose of the 10. Yeah, yeah. way more rounded caramel and musty malt nose. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You know what? I like the 10's fine. Coming off the heels of, what was it, the... The Bothy. The Bothy. The Bothy does have some more layers, mm -hmm. some more density to the body of the yeah. flavors. You know what it reminds me the of? The Bothy is, is a, a nicer, more complex and nuanced whiskey. It reminds me of what the Texas heat has done to sourced bourbons. Hmm. Where you know you could A, B, compare like a sourced bourbon that only lived in Indiana or, or right. Kentucky its whole life. Right. And then you can taste the sourced bourbons from Tennessee, Indiana, and Kentucky once Texas has impacted them. It thickens them up. And there's this density of thickens flavors. Them up. Yeah. I think that's happening in the smaller barrels. Yeah. There's this density of compression of flavors that are happening in this body. My read on aging in Texas is it's kind of like a high risk, high reward type of situation. Yeah. Right, the, like the man, lows are low, my friend. The the climate, you can get some amazing character and flavors out of those barrels. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you let it go just an inch too far, now it's getting 
way over barreled, over woody, yep. over oaky. So yeah, it's kind of like threading that needle. That's the name of the game. It's like cooking a pancake. <laughs> Wait for the it. The first one. Wait for it. I see bubbles. No, it's no, not yet. Burned, not yet. It's burned. <laughs> it's like, was it that I saw a thing on an avocado where it said how to tell when an avocado is ready. Right. And it had like 30 photos, right? Yeah. And they all said, not yet, not yet, not yet. And then the last one said, too late. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, David Cole, if it were McCallan, you'd remind everyone how you hate Sherry. Yeah, we were trying the... Thinking uh, it's personal at this point. Yeah. <laughs> no, so I, here's my question with that. Mm. Is there any... Does this... Because I think this is real. Mm. I think that there are flavors that you love in something but hate in another because of the expectations you have going into it of what you want from that thing. Right, so if you go into an Isla, right. and instead of everything you're looking for in a good Isla scotch, it tastes like a space side sherry cask, sure. then it's gonna feel like a letdown. Yeah. But if you go into space side sherry cask looking for space side sherry, you might find some really amazing things. I wonder, because uh, you know, we're all totally susceptible to playing games in our head without realizing it, right. and it affecting all your uh, palate and nose notes. So you're saying, depending on the brand that you're putting in the glass. Yeah. What you're wanting from a certain category of whiskey, or a category, yeah, right. Then uh, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna get those elements. But if there's something that's not quite what you were thinking, you were expecting what you were wanting from that category, right? It's like, yeah, that's not really what I was in the mood for, right? So like, we freaked out about the the um, Cav Cavallon. We'll talk about it later. Uh, the sherry Cavallon, cask, Cavallon sherry cask. Uh, freaked out about how amazing it was, but I wonder. If it would stand up blindly without any context oh. to just a run of all the classic sherry cask whiskeys, or were we just having low expectations of Taiwan whiskey and well, then being not, floored? No, that was no, that was part of it. But I know, you know I've been around a couple of whiskeys, <laughs> a few, and I absolutely know what was being presented in the second two whiskeys. Right, that was unique and special. Uh, amongst 99.99% of all whiskeys. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think no, so, now too. Now, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with, like, a big a big The other brand, unique ones, Absolutely. Yeah. We could do, like, a blind taste type of situation. I could sure. be fun. Yeah. Now, I, I'm i pretty damn sure I'll be able to pick out that Kabbalah like that. The second Maybe, one? Maybe, yeah. The second yeah, one? the sherry cask one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Sean McNally. So, just so we're clear, I have lived in Charleston, South Carolina my whole life. Charleston just happens to be smack dab in the heart of praline country. And I would right. like to know, I would like you to know, that pralines are not nuts. Yeah, so this was, he recently watched an old video of ours where we were talking about, you know, that kind of nutty praline note. He's dusting off the archives. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I forgot, we never addressed the fact that, yes, I know that pralines are, it's a candy basically. No, it's, it's like a confectionery. It's essentially a hard candy. Yes. Pralines do have nuts in them, and it's yes. al almost always pecans. Uh, pronounced pecans. Pecan. I, I go pe. Pecan. Pecans. Perhaps you were s smelling pecans because prela pralines are not nuts. They're not nuts. It's uh. In case anyone has been leading, leaving a, or leading a lie of a life, right? After watching that episode, thinking okay. that pralines were nuts, right? I just wanted to set them straight. Yeah, I say I, I want to take care of them. I say this without the slightest trace of sarcasm. That was, without a doubt, the most critically essential comment you have ever brought to this. Oh yeah, channel. There's no question. I don't know. Top notch. I don't know what we would have done moving forward. Without you know, that. it it would have it was the inevitable decline. <laughs> we just barely halted it. Okay. Like we were right on the precipice of yeah. complete disaster from which there would be no return. Yeah. But but the praline comet swooped in. in. Save the day. Yeah. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink. May you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.